Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting um, a beautiful simple painting of um, some windswept pine trees um, on a sand dune, sort of grassy sand dune. Um, and I'm going to be trying to sort of explain how I approach simplifying photographs for a watercolour painting. Now the first, it might seem obvious, but a lot of people don't realise this, um, the first and the best advice I can give you is to choose a simple photograph. A lot of people see photographs that they love, that are really beautiful and works of art in their own, uh, in their own right as photographs. However, um, that doesn't make them ideal candidates for paintings. Uh, when you're looking for a photograph or a painting, you want to look at it and think, can I simplify that and make it effective? Um, is there a focal point? Um, does the composition work? How would I need to change it? This photograph here from Pixabay, in my opinion, ticks a lot of the boxes. It's simple, um, it's quite clear, um, it doesn't need much simplification. Um, all I'm going to do with it is emphasise the trees. They're going to be my focal point. I like the, the, the way they're bent back into the wind and the way that the branches grow out at a more or less 90 degree angle from the trunks. The rest I'm just going to suggest. I'm going to suggest the cloudy sky cloudy blue sky and the sand dunes with grass growing over them. Um, I'm going to suggest those very very simply just to keep this nice and fresh. So in my opinion the most important thing when choosing the photograph is to choose a photograph that is simple enough for you to be able to translate into a painting in your own style and um, in your own way. I'm using um, Saunders Waterford cold press paper here. It's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees. I'm going to simplify now um, onto the page with a pencil and I'm going to literally just have my sort of sloping horizon line and I'm going to pencil in the main trunks and branches of three trees. They're going to be my focus, my focal point. So um, I want them to be pushing back um, as if they've been, um, you know, the growth has been stunted by the wind and they're leaning back as the wind blows in from the sea across the sand dunes. And these lovely branches from these pines that just come out at a sort of almost 90 degree angle from the trunks. Um, I'm putting in a rough line where the edges of my canopies will be so you can see how simple um, that sketch was. Um, the next thing I've done is to put across a very plain cerulean blue graduated wash across the whole painting. Um, and once that's on the painting, then to create my clouds, I'm going to use a clean damp flat brush and just pull along these sort of stringy pale clouds across the painting um, and then I'll go in with some tissue as well um, after I've pulled some of these out with this clean damp brush. I'm going in, I'm pulling out the paint and I'm wiping the brush on a tissue and then going back in and pulling out some more. And once I've got my main shapes in like that, I've just reinforced that very slightly by dabbing lightly with a tissue. I don't want to lift out too much. I want these clouds to softly diffuse and just give that kind of lovely background atmosphere that we've got in the photograph. So as I say, keeping it very, very simple. We don't need to have a sort of dramatic sky every single time you paint. Sometimes um, the quieter the sky, um, the subtler and the more beautiful it can look. And next, when it comes to the foreground, very often less is more. Um, you just want to suggest the foreground, especially if you're trying to lead the eye to another focal point, which in this painting is going to be the trees. So I have just swept with uh, my large Ron Ranson Pro Art Harky brush. Um, I've swept raw sienna for the sand 
straight across the foreground and now I've mixed up cerulean blue and raw sienna so that's the sky color and raw sienna to get this nice fresh green which I'm going to use the tips of the harky brush here and there just to put in um, the grasses growing up over the dunes. Now here I want to make sure I'm not covering the entire sand area that I painted across the foreground but I want to have enough suggestions of grasses um, to, to sort of pull the eye up the dunes um, up to those focal point trees. Um, as you can see I've got slightly uneven mixes of the raw sienna and cerulean blue so some greens are brighter some are slightly duller other bits are bluer and then i'm going in with more just plain raw sienna and building up some nice textures and it's all diffusing softly into itself and color blending on the page as well because the paint is wet so if i flick up the tips of the harky brush i can get some nice sort of grass textures going on too It will all lighten back and soften back a lot as it dries. And I think that's just about enough. I don't want to overdo it. I want to keep the foreground very, very simple. So I'm going to leave it to dry completely. And now that it's dry, I'm going to paint in the trees. I'm going to start off by putting in the foliage and the, the branches using um, a ready-made green, uh, my favourite green, it's Perylene Green by Winsor & Newton and it's a really useful colour to go in with straight away. You can mix this of course with something like um, ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow would make a good range of greens with maybe a bit of burnt sienna to sort of darken it off a bit. But I'm just going to use perylene green um, in various thicknesses and, and, and richness of mixture, adding a little bit more water here and there where I want it paler and more paint where I want it darker. And I'm using my um, medium, um, or is it a small? No, it's a small Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush, just the tips and the corners to dab in the foliage. And I'm leaving plenty of unpainted areas. I don't want to block these in. I keep looking at the photograph and while I'm definitely simplifying by just making these very strong marks here, I'm still trying to follow the direction that the branches grow in the photograph and leaving the appropriate amount of space because I'll be putting the trunks and the branches in later. So I want to have this sort of direction for my um, all these sort of beautiful dark green areas of foliage I'm trying to build it up and over exaggerating the dark green a little bit here but the trees are the focal point so I want to try and make sure they really stand out and really catch the eye. Once I've blocked in most of my foliage then I'm just going to use my small calligraphy brush to dot in some sort of little pine cones and uh, loose branches that are tending up from the top of the tree and maybe bring out a few little dots and dabs and suggestions of loose um, pine leaves and branches um, coming from this left tree from the from from the sort of edges of the canopies I can add a bit more of that once I've got my branches in but at the moment I'm just going to sort of try and make sure that it feels as if I'm getting the sort of the rhythm and direction of the trees and the branches um, properly and simply on the page now I've mixed up an inky consistency mix of sepia, which is a nice dark brown, and I'm following my pencil lines first for these trunks that lean back. And as you can see, I'm stopping and starting to allow the foliage to come across in front of the tree trunks. And then I'm pulling out these kind of branches underneath 
the rows of foliage so that the branches look as if the foliage is kind of growing up from them as it does with these very distinctive pine trees. And I'll work across the whole group of trees in this same way, just simplifying, only putting in as many branches as I think I need in order to make the trees make sort of visual sense if you see what I mean. And you can see where I was careful not to paint in too much foliage. I've got plenty of that lovely blue sky showing behind the trees, which really works nicely. I think the light behind the trees and, and in the gaps between the trees is what helps to draw the eye and helps to turn this tree group into the focal point. And we really haven't done very much work here at all. We've just painted an incredibly simple sky. We've dotted on sand and grass with the tips of the brush and then done the same pretty much with just perylene green for the canopies. And now using um, the small calligraphy brush, or you could use a rigger for this as well if you prefer, um, just these thin, delicate trunks and branches that are just pushed back by the wind. So by choosing a simple photograph, it was quite easy just to isolate the main shapes, the main parts of the painting, and we've got more of a chance of a successful painting if we can sort of break the picture down or the photograph down into it, sort of individual pieces like this, and then just work through it in a very simple way. And I'm just darkening up a little bit more of that foliage. Um, and then with the corner of a plastic card, just to ring the changes, I'm going to scrape through and create a few trunks and a few more branches just through the thickest areas of the paint. And that's the trees just about done now. I think just a little bit of work on the foliage. So again, using perylene green again, I'm just going to dab some colour around the bases of the trees, bring it down these kind of grass covered sand dunes as well, and just dot a little bit of this paint here and there. Um, and this will kind of bring the painting together. It will link the trees with the foreground by putting in just some darker shadowed areas. I'm not gonna to do too much of this because I don't want to cover up the light sandy areas, but I do want to make sure that the eye travels up that sort of grassy dune effectively. And then I'll just put in a few more little dotty bits of foliage, a couple more branches, and um, that's it finished. It's very, very simple, it's very easy, but the most important thing, as I've said a couple of times, is choose a simple photograph to paint from and then work out how you're going to um, manage it by just drawing out the simplest of shapes, the horizon line, the direction of your tree trunks, maybe where your um, canopies are going to go, just indicate that with pencil and then just maybe a few little lines just to guide you across your very simple foreground. Of course, there are lots of other ways of simplifying from photographs. This is just an example of, of a way that you, you, can, you can approach it. Other ways, of course, would be um, by drawing out lots of kind of um, thumbnail sketches of ideas for composition, um, trying out different ideas and deciding which one you like, and then working from that. Um, that's a great way of simplifying, and I'll probably do a video about that at some point soon. But with this way, it's choosing a very simple photograph and then thinking carefully about the most important elements of that to include in your painting. So I hope that was helpful. Um, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you click on the bell icon when you subscribe, it means you'll be notified every time I post. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.